2XKO is the newest fighting game everyone is hyped for, a 2v2 League of Legends fighting game. And an alpha was recently released, not to everybody, but luckily I got myself a code. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my impressions of the characters, the fuses, which are modes that kind of change how your combination of characters play, plus a couple of recommendations about like who to play. I do want to clarify this is not a tier list. Uh, this game is not out. It's not going to be out for a year or maybe possibly even more. This is just an alpha and really the first time many people have gotten to play the game for an extended period of time. So the emphasis here is really around impressions. And I'm going to be doing this in a pretty simple way. I'm just going to be talking about the points I think are good about the character and the points that I think are bad on the character. I have a good amount of time uh, fighting basically everybody. There's a couple of characters I don't have a, a ton of time against, but overall I think I have a pretty decent baseline. So for starters, we have Braum. So first, uh, his combos are pretty easy compared to a lot of other characters, which is definitely a good thing. Like this as a basic combo is a pretty good starting point, even though there's obviously better that you could do. He's also pretty good if you think the neutral game is kind of weird in this game. So a big thing in this game is that, let's say you're from a game like Guilty Gear or Street Fighter, that everything is blockable in the air. So it actually makes for some odd interactions if you're not used to it. So a nice thing about Braum is that he has a bunch of armor moves and a giant shield. And you're able to use this in combinations with assists. His shield powers up when you use certain special moves or supers and combos. So for example, this is his back S1 normally, just kind of like a big hitbox you could do. But in Unbreakable, it also does a projectile that freezes for a very long time. As far as his assist, I think his normal back assist is only really good if he has Unbreakable because it could just take more hits. But the tackle assist is quite good. So normally it gives a pretty easy to convert little pop up. And if he has Unbreakable, it gives a wall bounce in addition to seemingly having some armor. Finally, he apparently has the current highest HP total in the game. And right now, of course, it's the alpha. The damage is pretty high in certain situations. So his main flaws, I think, is just you kind of have to play him on point, uh, especially in round one, mostly because you don't have Unbreakable right away. Technically, you don't have to, and you can play someone else on point and then tag into him. But I'm pretty sure you can only do it when you have a super available. Or with sequences like this. Also, because he's so tall, he is vulnerable to mix-up styles that the other characters might not be vulnerable to. So this is the thing that's pretty common in fighting games where you block a jump in and you're kind of forced standing. Even if you switch your guard to crouch the game will read you as standing because you never exited block stun. It might not seem a lot, but this combined with assists can lead to a full combo. So next we have Ari. So the good things about Ari are, try saying that three times fast, by the way. One, she's just generally fast. She's also mobile, which might sound weird, but she has unique air options, primarily an air dash that she can control both forward and backwards, along with special moves that stall her in the air and allow her to move after, and she can move, shoot it, and move again. Before you ask, no, you can't do it multiple times in the air. You could just do it once, but still keeps her in the air for a long time. Her damage is actually quite high, which is surprising because she's not a big character, mostly because of this super that has different versions, and there's a version that you hold where this fireball goes back and forth. So she has quite a bunch of extensions with this that are quite damaging, and she can combo this into itself. So it's a really good meter dump. And she has pretty easy accessible mix up. Things as simple as land low or double overhead. In addition to an overhead move that is cancelable with air dash. And the air dash is high enough that you could follow up with either two overheads and a low or four overheads. <laughs> On top of that, she is an amazing support character. Mainly in this assist, which is if you played Marvel 3, you would know this as Cold Star. If you played Dragon Ball Fighters, this is SSJ Vegeta A. So this assist is really, really good against grounded things. 
Jumping is a little bit weaker because of where she appears. I think this was done on purpose just from learning from other tag fighters. And finally, she is extremely good at putting characters in the corner from basically anywhere. Now, some of her main weaknesses. So she has small buttons in general. The main thing about this character is that she's supposed to be fast and slippery. So having these big buttons with a lot of recovery uh, doesn't really help her that much. So it really puts an emphasis on actually being pretty cautious in her of neutral where uh, since she's so fast, you might feel like baited into playing very quickly. Uh, but her standard buttons, including like lights and stuff are just not that big. She also has the lowest life in the game at the moment. Uh, if you go on Twitter and see touch of death combos, they're almost always on Ari because she has the least amount of life. So the threshold for reaching it is just really low. You can make an argument that she's not a point character because she doesn't really have anything super belligerent when she's out. She's just kind of slippery and can maneuver. I don't think this is that much of a weakness because you can simply tag it to Ari. And I think this makes up for it. All right, so next we're going to talk about Echo. So what is good about Echo? One, like Ari, he's actually quite fast and also has some extra air options, mostly in that he has this kind of hopping forward dash. He can do quite late. He can't do it retreating like Ari, but just the fact that he can alter his air momentum is very good. And it's not the only way he can do it. He also has this air projectile he can do from pretty much any height. No real minimum restriction, except on the way up. His projectile is easily one of the standout things about him. Going from fast to slow is really good, and it's really, really easy to hit confirm. He's very tricky visually. Uh, if someone doesn't tell you how these things work, you basically are not going to know. <laughs> I'm actually overdue on asking one of my training partners how do these things work. Uh, because, again, in a match, him doing these like time travel replay things are very hard to visually track, if not impossible. This projectile actually gives him another really good thing, which his knockdown solo is really good because he can use it to cover options. I think both of his supers are pretty good. This one probably has some room for exploration, but also seems really good. And from my perspective, the only two really things that don't look that good about him right now is that he has low HP. He's the second lowest after Ori. And that it doesn't seem like he has a sweep for fighting retreating guard very well. He, his unique low is this, but I feel like just because he has the projectile and plus stuff and delay stuff that it's probably not a big deal. So then we have Alawi and side note, this is the character I have the least time against, which is funny because I played her a lot in Evil Japan, but uh, you know, she's come a long way since people have actually been able to sit, practice the game, lab the game with like unlimited time, even though the alpha is like 10 days. So first, good thing. So she has really good buttons. They have a lot of range. She's a surprisingly good support character. She doesn't look like it. But between her tackle assist coming out really far and fast, and then also this huge assist just hits almost full screen. If you're swinging, it will hit you full screen. And if you're full screen, it only takes a little bit of charging for it to actually reach. So normally doing a charging assist seems pretty committal, but this one is so huge that you could just do it from super far, making it a really good ground space control tool. She has a very easy strike throw game around her tentacles. So once you have a tentacle up with S1, if you do back S1, you'll get a strike. However, if you do down back S1, you get a command grab that's comboable. And speaking of support, when there's a tentacle on screen and you throw somebody, the tentacle will let you combo. So if you're struggling with figuring out mix-ups with a character, allow you, it gives you really good strike throw. Not, I don't want to say automatically, but it helps out a lot because the return on your throw is going to be far higher than it normally would. With some exceptions like Brahm's command grab or Yasuo's throw. Finally, her HP is high. I believe she has the second highest HP after Braum. And currently, she's one of the characters with a damage bug around the aforementioned tentacle. And specifically, when you grab on another character. I actually did not see if it was all characters can do this. The thing I know for sure is that when you do a command grab with Darius and the tentacles there, uh, the combo's unskilled. So right now, that's very good. But I mean, that's obviously a bug that they say is a known bug. 
So the big weaknesses mainly for her is that she's not, in my opinion, super good at varying her movement. And she's kind of floating. She pretty much has this. Which, you know, seems fine, but a lot of characters have good air tiers or things that reach really high. For example, Yasuo does not really care about these type of things. He's going to just slash at you from the air from really far. Like Braum, she is a big body, so she is vulnerable to mix-ups that the small characters are not vulnerable to. But again, she has more HP. And then finally, she does require some setup and planning. I don't think she's an easy partner to really use. I could be mistaken on this because of the tag system, so it could help you get out tentacles really quickly. But depending on the type of character you're playing against, it could be pretty difficult to get these on screen. Then we have Darius. So good things about Darius are he's quite easy compared to basically a lot of other characters. He's supposed to be an intro character. There's some cases where you don't need to do long combos because he has this bleed status effect. So it's better to just inflict it ASAP than doing like a full combo because it'll just help you out later on. He has a pretty annoying reversal. It says down as two. And he's the main character right now with one. This is not without counterplay, but it is kind of hard to play around against, if, especially if you don't know what to do about it. He has big old buttons, including special moves some top class anti-ears pretty high hp both his assists are really good so his forward assist is a tackle that wall bounces and his back assist has a very unique special property on it that you know moves in this game you could push block with meter or retreating guard for free but his back assist allows you to do neither so you have to actually just take what they're going to do and it has this property because he has a move that has that so here is retreating guard again and here is his S1, this little pull thing with a couple of follow-ups where you can strike, throw, or frame trap. This also makes him not have only effective easy mix-up alone, but since he has an assist you can't push block or retreating guard, it gives other characters really good, really easy to set up mix-ups. And because of his very big buttons and his super, he's very good at fighting assists that are called poorly. As far as downsides, the main ones really is he's not that fast, but it would be kind of crazy if he was fast. And the movement in this game is kind of slippery. So even though he's not straight up fast, he's able to cancel his movement pretty quickly. And as a big body, again, he's vulnerable to mix ups that the other big bodies are. He can be zoned because he doesn't fight well at full screen. But again, he has pretty big buttons. And once he gets a resource, he could hit certain things on reaction with his super two. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people think he's either the best character or one of the best characters right now. And finally, the last character I want to talk about is uh, the character that I'm maining, the character I put the absolute most time into, Yasuo. So what is good about Yasuo? So one, he is incredibly fast. Uh, so not just talking about his backdash and run, but also using his stance dash because his stance dash goes incredibly far. Uh, his back dash out of stance is kind of normal, but his stance dash goes like half screen. So he's actually very mobile. He has very good screen control between the stance stab, his S1, his charge S2, and just the threat he has of either taking this space with a slash or pulling up with it. And lastly, using the wind wall upgraded stab that goes full screen. So he has extremely good screen control. But then also he has good anti airs because with all this ground screen control, he also is able to hit people from very far with his anti air 2H. And in case someone is jumping at you, you can use stance M also. So he has a lot of control over the screen. Maybe the most outright screen control in the game. Screen control aside, his buttons are also pretty big and good. The, one of the main ones is his 5M, standing M, and his 2M, but it's really 5M. This move gets a lot of mileage standing him so a lot of characters have meter dumps so like ra can do level one over and over she can do level one level two he also has level one level two by doing his super that's on s2 and holding up s1 and s2 and he'll follow up if you have the extra bar this is pretty good for just cashing out and killing you will see this way more often than you think and thankfully it's a pretty fast super not gonna lie he has a comboable throw um, not all characters have this, but Yasuo, uh, his stomp picks up OTG. So he's able to pick up his throw into a combo. 
Finally, the nature of his combos, especially his more advanced combos, make him quite burst safe. One of his more medium difficulty combos involve this kind of sequence. So if you're getting hit by him, a pretty good spot to burst would be after this launch. But he can choose to actually stay on the ground and make your burst whiff. Now the main thing is he's not blocking your burst, so there's still stuff you can do. When you block a burst, it's actually the game rewards you a lot, but when you make burst whiff, you can still act. Kind of weird design choice, but I get it. They're rewarding the hard read of jumping and blocking the burst over just making a combo where the burst whiffs, but it's still a benefit that he's able to do this. For a bad point, the number one by far is that he's not easy. I think he's pretty much the hardest character. I think Alawi is more like, let's say not intuitive, but like with building and watching people, you could replicate what people are doing, but he's just straight up just requires execution despite this game having simple inputs. So for example, there is this combo, which my editor can attest. It took me a few tries to do this. This is probably like one of his harder combos. So you're playing a line that is cool, but maybe not for everybody of like, what are you actually comfortable with doing? So by not being able to do his hardest stuff, you are definitely leaving damage on the table compared to other characters like Braum and Darius who just have easier combos are just button, 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 and then like some supers at the end or tag. And his other big thing is that he really requires specific characters to maximize his potential or else he's just like let's say a selfish character like you play him on in the front you do all the work with him because he's just really good at neutral and really good at confirming controlling space and then if you have the wrong partner with him when he dies it gets really hard and this leads us into what characters do i think are good for building a foundation for your team which sounds interesting because it's only two characters but really a team is two characters plus your fuse so Yasuo, like I mentioned, is not a good character for building a foundation around. I think he's a good character. He's a great character. <laughs> Honestly, he's a great character. But if you're making a team around Yasuo, it means you're picking a character to help him. So there are currently six characters in this game. And in my opinion, the three characters that are good, let's say, building blocks to build a team around, because again, a team is three parts, two characters plus a fuse, would be Darius, Ari, and Echo. So in the case of Darius, the main things is because one, he's just easy, and two, he's able to counter really effectively. He has an assist that you can neither retreat nor push, like I mentioned, and because of bleed, you could do a bunch of chip damage, so you can actually make strategies around not hitting people with him. In the case of Ari, her back assist is incredibly strong and lets people set up safely. So if you have a character that likes putting something on the screen first and then doing something with it after, Ari lets you do this in a very safe fashion. And Echo has a very easy to use neutral assist, the slow projectile, and it helps that all three of these characters are actually pretty good. Darius and Echo, I think, are especially standouts in this regard, where Ari is just like just a really, really good all-around support. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the last part of your team. So my team is Yasuo and Ari. When you pick your team, the game asks you to pick a fuse, and the fuses will affect how you actually play the team and what you're going to do and how you're going to do your game plan. I don't think it has as big of an effect as, for example, if you're a Dragon Ball player, you're thinking about a assist, B assist, and C assist. I don't think it's as major as that, but it definitely has an impact on how you're going to be picking options, controlling the screen, doing offense, things like that. So there are five fuses in the game. This pulse fuse is basically for people who don't really play fighting games or are trying a new character, so I'm not going to include this. So with six characters and four fuses, there are 60, six zero combinations of things that you can do in the game. Um, and that's not even including all the characters, right? Or potential future fuses that they could add. The good news is outside of Pulse, there are three fuses that I think are really good and pretty valid for basically most combinations, especially if you're playing one of Ari, Echo, and Darius. There probably is something for you to work with. But there is one fuse that I think is technically lacking, but I think it's probably just because of how the alpha is going and uh, there are things like damage bugs and things like that that make it seem like it's not worth picking for the moment. So to start though, we're gonna start with goat fuses. 
So the first one I want to talk about is 2x assist. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward one. It lets you use two assists. And before the alpha, so like Plague at Evo Japan, Evo 2024, Evo 2023, and Common Breaker, people weren't using this too, too much, but I did see it every now and then. But this is incredibly popular in the alpha. And this is personally what I use as well. So it, the main thing is that it's just good all around. It's good for neutral. It's good for combos. And damage is higher than it would be because of the damage book, but still very useful to get extensions. And then also for extended offensive sequences. As long as your team has good synergy, I also think it's easier to use than the freestyle assist, which at the moment at least, and probably in the future, just things not being too difficult or requiring too many specific timings is probably good for the long run. Then there's double down. So this previously was like never used, but it's actually reasonably popular in the alpha. And basically when they showed off Braum and I saw this super, and I'm sure everyone else saw this super, they were like, oh, this is what double down is for. So double down does two important things. One is that you can do a super into your partner super. Something like this. This is good for big damage extensions, especially if your partner's character has a way to do multiple level ones or a level one into level two like Yasuo. And this is a little bit less known, but if you have an assist out on screen, you could do a super and tag into them. But the other side that has the pulse fuse will not be able to do this. I can't do it until the end. We're on double down. I'm able to do it pretty much instantly. And this is a pretty big deal because you can get mix ups off supers and make your partner heal. And again, the most use I've seen out of this fuse is from Braum, who has a lot of HP, which means Braum gets to heal and stay hard to kill because of his huge HP pool. And then the last popular fuse that uh, was by far the most popular in all like the super early tournament builds and things is freestyle. So freestyle lets you tag twice. So for example, I could go through, call a character, tag to them, do some stuff, tag back. This one outside of the mix up freedom just has the most visual clutter. The other thing is that sandwiching people is very good, I guess, retreating guard. So this makes this fuse quite valuable. And for sure the character you'll probably see it the most with is Echo, and Echo is pretty popular at the moment. So Fury is the last fuse and is by far the least used. Uh, originally, this was what the game recommended you to do. Uh, now it recommends Pulse, which is the auto combo for beginner fuse. So this fuse actually does two things also. It both gives you a damage buff, which I heard was 25% damage buff. So a normal Yasuo BNB. does like 410 off a of light, but when fuse is active, you get quite a bit more, so like 60 more damage. But not only that, you get a dash cancel. And it seems like there's some restrictions on this as far as combos. It's not like you could do it over and over and over again. But I think a big benefit of it is that you can do things like chase retreating guard. So the main reason why it's not being used is that, of course, this is an alpha version, but you have to be under 48% HP to use the effects of this fuse. The dash cancel only seems to be usable once. And a lot of characters, bugs notwithstanding, have really high damage meter dumps. So... Uh, it is pretty reliable to kill someone pretty easily round two or three. So it feels like this is only really usable in round one. Where like something like double down, you feel like you don't get to use it that much round one until you learn about the tag thing. Uh, but even if you don't know that you can tag during the super, it's still very usable round two and round three. So that's kind of my overview and impressions on the characters and fuses at the moment. So personally, I have very, very high ratings for Echo and Darius. I basically think they're the best characters. And then after them, there are a couple of characters I think are as good as Echo and Darius in theory. They just need more time to develop. Uh, those are Yasuo and Ari, mostly just because like 
they have a lot of special effects they have moves with weird properties there's a lot to explore every day i open the twitter hashtag for those characters and they have like a ton of new stuff or a new routing or a new setup or something the last two characters i still think are good but they just need to be played with the right combination. So I feel like it's like Braum. Braum is like you almost always have to play him on point and you need stuff to support him. Even though he's really good at the armor, of course, uh, it really helps if he has the right partner. Uh, and Alawi because she has to set up tentacles. But once she starts cooking, she really, really, really gets going. As far as the fuses, the three most popular fuses are pretty much safe bets. Uh, and the main one that I think needs a little work is Fury, but I think it's also just because of the alpha and just like people fighting damage bugs and meter dumps make Fury feel not as valuable as the other fuses. But yeah, if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it. Uh, I'm streaming this game on Twitch basically every day, so I could put a review of my thoughts on the game in general like sometime early next week like and subscribe if you guys feel like it i'll see y'all next time peace out